Welcome everyone to another observability clinic, automating release validation with the SLOs. This is an update of the Dynatrace cloud automation capability, November, 2022. There's a lot of cool things that we bring to our customers. And I, I'm actually happy that I can show it today. I could demo, but I brought one of the engineers with me today because uh, Arthur, first of all, thanks for, for being here. How are you? Oh, well, thanks. Great to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much because over the years, um, since we've been kind of bringing cloud automation to our customers, there's a lot of improvements that people have asked for. And today is the day where we're going to show a lot of improvements around how we are using dashboards to define SLOs for release validation, because finally we have great support for the data explorer uh, tile and thanks to you and the team that you're working in. So folks, what we're going to learn today, um, how do we use Dynatrace Cloud Automation to create dashboards? Uh, what are the new things? We always had the option to use dashboards, but it was uh, it had certain limitations, I would say. We didn't support the Data Explorer as well. Plus, um, we had a lot of, it was a little challenging to define the pass and the warning through the name value pairs in the title. So we'll show you how all of this now works very smoothly with the Data Explorer. Um, yeah, uh, and then what's also really nice, we'll show you how all of these evaluations not only show up in cloud automation in the UI itself, but also in the release inventory. And uh, Arthur, I'm really, thank you so much that I can steal all of the great work that you have done, uh, especially with the, you you set up a Kubernetes cluster uh, with uh, Potato Head, one of our kind of new favorite sample apps, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, you did a demo, uh, like you did a deployment already of version 1.0.1. .1. We're not going to do new deployments. We're just going to show you how uh, we can use uh, Dynatrace to now evaluate the release. Right? That's right. I, I believe you've got a, a dashboard. I got a oh, dashboard. Yeah. I think you built the dashboard for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm really sorry that I steal all of your thunder here, but I'm really excited about this, right? Because we've been talking about this for so long. So folks, if you're new to this, uh, this is a dashboard that you can build if you're an, an application owner, a service owner, you can put on any type of metric that you are that you know is interesting for you and important for you to validate the quality of your service, right? And we've, uh, I mean, you've put on, Arthur, a couple of things here, uh, service response time, failure rate, uh, request count. I can see here the data explorer tile with and without thresholds. Um, but before we go into the details, Arthur, I want to first show our users what actually happens behind the scenes. So every time you have a new build, every time you run a, a test, every time you basically say Dynatrace, I want you to give me an assessment of my application based on this dashboard. So basically you look at this dashboard for me and you come back with a score you can trigger cloud automation through the API, through the CLI. Most of the people that we are that are using this are triggering this from their pipeline or maybe at the end of the load testing uh, tool run or even in production to validate a blue-green deployment. And every time you do this, and if you have also release validation uh, turned on or you have deployed uh, and added metadata to your deployment, about what is this uh, release, what version. Uh, we also show you the result here in the releases overview. So in this case, Arthur, you did the deployment earlier of version 1.0.1.0. Uh, and I can see that the last evaluation happened actually at uh, 15.25. Uh, What's also nice, you can click on here. I also get the results about the release event. And uh, when I click on this one, right, I directly get two my uh, release validation. And what we see here is for every single metric, for every single chart, for every single uh, data explorer tile, we have a green, a yellow, fortunately no red right now. There's also some gray and there's a total score. And really what this is, with Dynatrace Cloud Automation, you can create a dashboard like this, you augment it with thresholds, and then when you are running a new evaluation, the evaluation will take the time frame you give it. It will look at every single tile on here, calculates a score for every single chart, and then uh, calculates a total score. Okay, Arthur, um, I want to bring you in now because I want you to do me, you give me some education on what you've actually built. Um, show me what's, what's kind of interesting in you, what I should know about this. 
Yeah, well, I think there are a couple of features that we should we should talk about and point out here. The first one, up the top of your screen there, when you've got the, the services, um, the, the service monitoring there, we've got the service request count. And I think you mentioned that over in the evaluation results, that's actually gray. And that's because that's just there for informational purposes. It's not actually participating mm -hmm. in, in the evaluation. Uh, and, and that's how we're just pulling in these ones that, that neither have thresholds defined or uh, any pass and warning criteria. But that's, that's basically just there to help me know what's going on. Yeah, that's, that's cool. So it's just like any any data explorer tile without any thresholds. We still pull the data in and the use case here, as we've heard from our users, sometimes you don't know yet what is a good threshold or maybe it's not a good candidate, but you still want to bring in the data because in cloud automation, yes, it shows up gray here, but if I go to the chart, right, I can still get all of this stuff in here. And like, I think it was the the count yep. yeah that's what it is right i still get historical data and then i can figure out if i want to do something with it yeah yeah so that's the first thing and the the second feature that ties in nicely with that is if you look down uh we've got the process metrics down the mm -hmm. bottom of the screen there's a couple mm -hmm. there that i'm actually excluding from the evaluation ah. you see there's this new bit of syntax there exclude yeah. equals true and ah, okay. by just adding that one in we can say hey look I have it set up how I want with maybe thresholds or, or however, but I don't want that to be part of the evaluation. That's awesome. So that means by default, any chart I put on here is included, but then I can say certain metrics I just maybe put on even duplicated because I want to have a different representation of the same metric in a different way, or it might just be something for informational purposes, but it shouldn't be included in the evaluation. Then I just go in like I used to do in the in the past, a semicolon and then I have name value pairs and one is the exclude equals true. That means if I get you right, if I remove this, the next time I run the evaluation, it should be included, correct? That is correct. It's that easy. All right. I'll give it a try. Okay. Um, before I kick off another evaluation, well, I, I, let me actually kick off an evaluation now to prove that you actually um, implemented what you said. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. So uh, let's go back to my uh, the project here that you created, I think your project was the uh, the Potato Head Server Mon. That's awesome. And here we have the uh, the list of the previous evaluations. So, folks, you can trigger evaluations through different ways. Um, Arthur, how do you typically trigger your evaluations? Uh, like you're going to do it right now, just here in the UI. Mm -hmm. Exactly. We just click the the service and stage that we want to run with, yeah. and so then evaluation. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Then next, um, and now we said normally you integrate this with your with the delivery pipeline. You deploy something, a new version. You then run a test, and at the end of the test, uh, you basically give the time frame with the start and end. Um, Arthur, I will just do it easy, right? I mean, what what I want is I want to say let's just analyze the last thirty minutes. Now I know there's one particular thing that we need to do here. I think it's called releases version. That's correct. And uh, and I think it's called we. Zero one zero, right? I, I think, think v zero dot uh, one dot zero. Yeah, perfect. Now, folks, this is just a again a name value pair thing. I can add in whatever I want. I could do. Uh, I could add a build ID one two three. Um, I could say uh, triggered by equals Andy. Uh, if you have an external tool, maybe you could do uh, like you have a CI CD tool, and you could say HTTPS my CI CD tool, just for informational purposes. Okay, uh, good to go. Trigger it. Yep, let's do yep. it. Awesome. So we'll trigger the sequence. We can do it through the UI. We can do it through the API. Uh, this will now go off, uh, run the evaluation. As this is running, I just want to quickly go back here. Um, so what we should see now new is that Data Explorer tile process committed memory should now be included. Um, I want to ask you quickly, can I, if I go quickly in one of these, uh, configure the Data Explorer, that means your implementation is basically looking at whatever metric I have on here on the Data Explorer? That's correct, yeah. We've got uh, all, all metrics here. You can have it in the build tab or the code tab like this particular one. Mm -hmm. So we now support the whole lot. And yeah, what also is really cool, I think your mouse is near it. We also are now supporting the, the unit there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
that's awesome. Yeah. So you can actually specify what type of for the for the percentage. You know, that's just a, 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 an an easy one here for the CPU usage. But I guess for metrics that are, do you want to have milliseconds, microseconds, seconds? You can just yeah. change it. Yeah, that's awesome. And then just for me to understand, you can specify one threshold here and. There's obviously certain metrics that are get it, that are not good when they go up, like CPU usage. But some might be bad if they go down, like uh, I don't know, available memory. Um, how would I define uh, a threshold that goes the other way around, where green is high and then orange and then red? Yeah, that's actually pretty easy. All we have to do is just swap the colors around, so have red at the top mm -hmm. and then green at the bottom. Okay. And yeah, that'll work. That will work. So I think I will just leave this as it is. And then I think you have one of the, yeah. the tiles here anyway, so that I don't mess up the dashboard while my evaluation is running. I, I think host memory available or host disk available, yeah. those two. Oh, perfect, yeah. Let's see. Perfect, yeah. And then here we have, so red, orange, and green, yeah. Makes a lot of sense. So that means uh, everything is good if it's if it's green. If it's above thirty, between twenty and thirty, it's it's uh, yellow or orange, and then everything below is basically red. Cool. That's correct. Yep. Uh, also, actually, let's go quickly back and let's see if the uh, evaluation uh, finished. I have multiple options, obviously. Right, I could go back to my releases screen, and if I refresh here, I would assume if everything. Uh, it works as expected, exactly. That was the evaluation I ran a couple of minutes ago before we kicked off the recording. This is the one that just came now, came in now. So at at uh, this particular point in time, right, we have all of the evaluations here. And if I click on it, then it should get me again directly to the last result. Awesome. And remember, this was the one where I said build one, two, three. That's also the x-axis definition here. Trigger by Andy, dashboard link, CI, CD link. So from here, I also get directed to, uh, to the dashboard, yeah? Yep. And Arthur, it, the exclusion also works because now I removed the exclusion and now the process committed memory is here as a, new, as a new line. And I think the previous one are just shown, obviously, because we're adding a new line, but obviously there was never a result before. Yeah. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so a couple of more questions to you. Uh, those users that have used this capability in the past, most of them have used uh, the, the old charts. So my first question to you, will the old charts still work if people have not yet converted them over to a data explorer? That is correct. They'll still work. The only thing that uh, is maybe relevant there is that we've also added support for units there as well, right? So uh -huh. that's a, it's a nice feature. But aside from that, they work just as they did. Uh -huh. And yeah, the only thing I would say, if, uh, if you don't mind just talking about the data explorer tiles, moving uh -huh. to those, is I would always advise just going in and checking through the, the evaluation results just uh -huh. to see if there's any messages coming out uh, about any of the changes that we've made, particularly just during that first evaluation. Uh -huh. So that means you're saying do a test run and then figure out if everything still works. And folks, if it's a test run like I just did, I just specified any time range. You can then always later on also remove that uh, run again. It's the ignore for comparison. You can just say uh, this was a test run. Uh, everything looks good. Right? But you can then invalidate it and then it goes away. That's good. Um, one more question on this. Do, this, do the old, well, not old, the, the additional capabilities uh, still work where, like I think you have it here, key equals true? Sure, uh, yep. Yeah, that's, that's an important one because in this case, I put key equals true because if my service response time deteriorates, then that's, I, I can't have that. So I, I, I wanted to make sure that it would fail the, the evaluation there. Um, so yeah, that works as it did, as well as also uh, the pass and warning criteria that you can specify there. They work. Just the only thing is, um, basically, if you have pass and warning criteria defined there, they will take preference over any thresholds that you've defined visually on the, the data explorer tile. Okay, so that means in this case, I think if I look at this, the pass is somewhere around 50 or 60 milliseconds. I could override it and say pass equals, let's say 80. And then sure. 
this would take precedence and obviously it would then not match um, uh, the visual indication here. But I guess the reason why you would do it because folks, if you don't know about this, but you, you with 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 uh, this here, you have some some special features, I would say, right? Um, because we can say it should not be um, equals uh, plus twenty percent, right? It should be smaller than plus twenty percent, which means it will now take into consideration the previous results. This is great for regression detection. This is something we cannot model easily with with the green and red yet <laughs> red and yellow thresholds in the UI. Yeah. Um, another one that you didn't mention, just to confirm, is the weight also still there? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So everything as before is there. The only thing that is new is we now have the exclude equals true. That, mo that means whatever I specified still, it will be excluded. Um, yeah. Anything else, Arthur? And the, the support for the visual thresholds, right? So from yeah. the tiles itself. And oh, while I mentioned that, we also now support resolutions other than inf. So you can have that straight on your tile um, or you can target metrics that don't support resolution inf. So that's another nice feature. Yeah, there was a, I remember that a lot of people were asking about this, yeah. Um, one more question for you. Do we still support the, uh, the SLO tile if somebody puts the SLO tile on a dashboard? Sure, yeah. yeah. That's awesome because I know. Uh, I mean, for most cases, especially in a in a in a in a delivery pipeline, you probably have your 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 metrics that you're interested in, like your failure rate, response time, but then also metrics like uh, host uh, CPU and and process, like you have it here. You would not necessarily have an SLO defined for this in production, but in case you have an SLO, right? That means uh, you can add an SLO tile here, and then you can select an SLO, and this means this SLO that you have set up maybe for production monitoring purposes, or even in your whatever environment it is, would then also be included as part of the evaluation. That's great. Cool. Um, Arthur, is there anything else we missed? No, I think that's a, a really good summary of all the new features. Yeah, cool. Uh, which means, um, folks, if you are on cloud automation already and you have your dashboards, then start converting your old charts over to the new data explorer. Leverage the fact that we can now do the visual uh, threshold definition, which is which is just like easier on the eye and it just makes more sense. However, you also ensured that the more advanced capabilities with the with the with the plus and minus, like comparing it to the previous builds, all still works. I really like the exclusion feature, so you can build dashboards. By default, everything is included, but you can now exclude things. Um, that actually might be a good one too, if somebody has a dashboard, an old one, because in the old one, you always had to say, this is an SLI. Now we kind of reversed it. Yeah, that's a good one. Good, uh, let me just quickly go back to the slides. If, uh, I think that's really the whole summary, right? That's everything what we did. That's correct. You've got the main points there. The visual thresholds, the support for building code tabs, the custom resolutions, and also that we support the units. Yeah, cool. Hey, with this, Arthur, thank you so much again for doing this. And um, I am sure as there's going to be new improvements coming uh, in cloud automation, uh, we'll do more update sessions on this. But this is it for the day, November 2022, new updates coming to cloud automation as it goes to uh, dashboard-based uh, SLOs. Um, yeah, very cool. Thank you. Thank you for having me. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.